Today we're talking about a brand new piece of gear from Edelkrone, one that was released today, and we were lucky enough to be the first ones to get their hands on it. And that's this guy right here, the Jib One, a portable motion control jib. Edelkrone did hook us up with this jib, and we did partner with them to do this episode, but as always, everything that follows is our true and honest opinion. We're also gonna be giving one of these away to one of you, so make sure you stick around until the end to find out how you can get one for free. But like their other gear, this thing is pretty much ready to go right outside of the box, no need to build anything. We're just gonna mount it to our tripod by placing it above the screw and rotating the ring here to tighten it all down. Now with it mounted, we stay toolless and loosen these screws here, then pull the arms out. Then we lock the butterfly screws back down, unlock the arms here, and we can now use our jib. And although what makes this thing great is the motion control, as you can see here, if you ever need to, you can of course use this thing manually. But now we can get our camera mounted here and then toss on one of the counterweights to balance our system to this specific camera, which is so easy that it's pointless for us to explain just by looking at Josh here, you should get it. And if you don't, I call a doctor. And one of the coolest features on here for me has been the ability to change the angle of the arm. You just turn the knob here and you could adjust the angle of the movement to nine different angles. Once you change the angle, you just adjust the mounting plate to be level again and there you go. So it's not just locked to that straight vertical movement like most jibs. You could use it like a normal jib or in more of a slider type mode and seven stops in between. But now we're fully set up and ready to go. So if we want to use the motion control, which of of course you do. We can either go battery powered or tethered to power. We'll go battery powered to stay lean, which is especially great for one man band type stuff. This is perfect to get motion when you don't have someone to run that extra shot for you, or if you're the only person there running the shot and on camera. And of course this all gets a lot cooler when you do add on the head plus to the system, which is something I really love about Edelkron gear. You can buy it piece by piece, building out your gear over time. This is all modular. So you can start with just the jib, then throw in the head later and the focus module after that, and the head plus can move easily between the slider and the jib one. So it's a very clever ecosystem where all the gear works really well together and can grow over time. But with the head plus connected, we're gonna power them both on and then jump into the app. And thankfully the app that they have for their motion control is incredibly easy to use. I never looked at a manual or tutorial to use it at all. It's just that intuitive. But inside the app, I'm gonna connect and calibrate the head and the jib here again made very easy to understand and execute. So we follow this, hit set, make sure the angle is correct, hit set again, and we're into the app. And just like before, I can move the system manually to the point I want to set as my start. Then in the app, I hold and set that as my one, then move again to my two. And now we have a more complex move that we can perfectly repeat over and over, which will be really great for things like product shots. You can also shift the angle of the arm for different moves like we showed before. To do that easily with the camera attached, you just remove the head here, move to the angle of the position you want. I'll go to here for more slider style moves, then pop the head back on and we're good to go. You can also go to an underslung position if you need to get even lower just by spinning the mount around then spinning your camera on the head. And now you can get some really great low angle work with very little needed to switch between modes. And like I keep saying, motion control is what makes me want to kiss this gear on the mouth. And the app control is deceptively simple. Like I said before, it's crazy easy to use and seems simple, but there is a lot under the hood and a lot that you can do here. Like setting normal moves like I showed before. And of course you have control over the speed in which it does that move as well, but you can also record your performance of a move. You just hit record here, perform the move that you want the system to do, and now you can play back your intended movement with precision as much as you'd like. You also have the sequencer here, so you can set all your points, then move into the sequencer and assign those points. Now it can move between multiple positions over time, and you have more speed controls here to adjust the transition between points, and you can ease in and out of the movements as well, which I usually like to do to make sure the whole move overall is very smooth. But once we have all this set, we can loop the move to repeat over and over, which is a great way to do effect shots with the system. Like we showed in our slider episode, if you repeat the same movement several times, you can take those multiple passes to create effect shots that seem far more complicated than they actually are. For instance, if we wanted to show our character waiting a long time, we could show that passage of time in an interesting way. We just set our move, then run it over and over with Josh in different positions. Then in the edit, we line up these different different takes and can then either cut in between, fade, or even mask to overlap until we have something like this.
In a similar idea, but without multiple passes, we could do sort of a time-lapse sort of shot just by slowing our move down a lot, then having our character go about their actions. Then we take that into the edit, speed it up, and we're done. If you have something like Real Smart Motion Blur, you could always drop that in to add motion blur to their movements, but overall, these are incredibly easy and effective techniques. Of course, you can do proper time lapse as well, or take this much further to do larger, more involved VFX shots like we showed here, but there are a ton of fun and clever effects that you could do very easily just by grabbing a few passes of the same shot. Now, this is a shorter jib, but I found it really useful for our day-to-day -day work since it's so compact and simple to set up and adjust and move around. We found ourselves using it more than I would expect. Usually with rigs like this, it's a lot more trouble than it's worth when you're working fast or there's little to no crew. So this piece of gear is pretty exciting for that alone. And like I said in the beginning, Edelkrone is giving away a jib one to one of you. All you have to do is leave a comment on this video and then go follow them on Instagram. And that's it. Over the next week, they're going to be picking a winner and sending you over a rig of your own. So, you know, do that. Also check the notes below for links to find out more about the Jib 1 and check out the last episode we did on motion control. But until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.